Hey, welcome to Sustainable Investing. In this video, we're going to do a deep dive into the electric trucking company called Hylion. Make sure you stay until the end where I'll give you my full thoughts on the company and whether I think they're a good investment. So Hylion is a electric and hybrid trucking solutions company that was founded back in 2015. They went public on the stock market in 2020 under the ticker symbol HYLN. Their mission is to be the leading provider of electrified powertrain solutions for the commercial transportation industry. Their vision is to have a global net carbon negative commercial transportation industry. Their CEO is Thomas Healy, who is also the founder of the company. He's a mechanical engineer by background and has also done sports racing and is an entrepreneur. He's also one of the youngest CEOs in any publicly traded company and made the Forbes 30 under 30 list back in 2017 when Hylion was still a startup. Their primary business is to sell electric and hybrid class 8 semi trucks. Next we'll do a deep dive into their business by looking at their recent investor deck for their 2020 fiscal year results. On their 2020 sales slide they give some pretty general statements like they achieved their 2020 installation goals. They began utilizing mod centers for hybrid installs. They partnered with early adopters that they hope can convert to larger customers over time, and their market acceptance continues to grow with new customer adoption. Next, they talk about their next generate battery that they unveiled earlier in April. They plan to commercialize this in 2021, and they state that it integrates a Toshiba LTO battery cell structure. LTO stands for lithium titanate oxide and according to Wikipedia this battery chemistry has the advantage of charging much faster than conventional batteries but has a reduced energy density. Their module also features a hybrid solution and has passed validation testing for transportation. They also state it might have other marketable uses aside from internal use for their own vehicles. Some of the advantages they highlight for this new battery module include recharge times of 8 minutes, longer cycle life as much as 5 times more than conventional EVs, and they state on the conference call that they actually expect that the battery could outlive the truck itself, and also that it will have improved safety. Notice however they don't mention anything about range specifically here, which would be an initial flag to me since the chemistry that we identified as LTO does have a lower energy density. Next they talk about their plans for their hybrid electric truck. It seems for this truck they've experienced delays in launching it, but plan to deploy units later in 2021. For their semi truck powered by renewable natural grass, which is their hyper truck ERX, they plan to do initial customer demo deployment in late 2021, commercialization and shipments in 2022. And they also mentioned that they're outsourcing some of their engineering to test and improve on the powertrains and select suppliers to source their components. Next, they talk about their path to hydrogen. Here they provide a checklist on what infrastructure we have in place for renewable natural gas, hydrogen, and battery electric. For renewable natural gas, all the infrastructure seems to be in place for converting the bio waste to a fuel that can be injected into natural gas pipelines, which it then fuels the stations. Hydrogen is much more complicated because establishing hydrogen fueling stations is incredibly expensive and delivering the hydrogen isn't fully developed. And also clean hydrogen from electrolysis isn't yet fully scaled. 
In terms of battery electric, we have the infrastructure to produce the electricity, although arguably there's a lot more progress that's needed to transition from fossil fuel energy sources to renewable energy sources. The electric grid transmission um, to the charging stations still needs to be um, more developed. And then the charging stations themselves need to be uh, built out more to accommodate semi-trucks. Here's an interesting graphic that shows Hylion's strategy across its three different semi-truck platforms. So along the horizontal axis, we can see that for trips between 0 to 250 miles, they expect their battery electric semi to be the most practical. And from 250 miles up to 1,000 miles will be their trucks that run on renewable natural gas, which will eventually evolve into hydrogen fuel cells, which is likely five plus years away. So for now, the products to pay attention to in the short term will be their ERX truck that runs on natural gas for long distances and their battery electric semi truck for shorter distances. Here they report their recent Q4 2020 financial results as well as for their full year of 2020. We can see that they've not yet generated any sales or revenue since none of their business is yet commercialized. They're still in product development mode and won't be doing any sales until earliest 2022. We can see in 2020 that they had a net loss of $39 million due to operating expenses like R&D, but they still have $390 million left over in cash. And I also looked up their long-term debt, which is about $900,000, which I would say is a very good situation to be in. So after reading the investor deck, I wanted to look up what is the total addressable market for selling semi-trucks in the United States. So from Statista.com, they state that in 2020, about 190,000 heavy-duty vehicles were sold in the United States alone, and in 2021, they're expecting this number to increase to 240,000 units. In terms of competition, I would say that they're greatest threat would be Tesla's semi-truck, which is fully battery electric, is expected to go over 500 miles on a single charge, and they're planning to go into full production later in 2021. However, I think it's going to take a long time for both companies to fully ramp up their production to mass scale. So with over 200,000 units um, of addressable market in the United States alone, I would say that there's plenty of market share to go around for both companies for many years into the future. So now I think we need to talk about the contentious issue of hydrogen fuel cells, because if you're investing in a company like Hylion, their whole product roadmap is very much focused on hydrogen being an available fuel source for their trucks in the future. So you need to be aware of the two sides of the argument on hydrogen's future. First, let's start with the negative side. Elon Musk, the CEO of Tesla, who sells fully battery electric vehicles, has gone on the record calling hydrogen fuel cells mind-bogglingly stupid and a load of rubbish. He's also said that their success is simply not possible. The main issue with hydrogen is that there is an immense expense to build out the infrastructure, the fueling stations, to store and receive the hydrogen. It costs many, many millions of dollars for a single uh, station, and it's much more expensive than building out a fleet of electric charging stations. Now, Sandy Munro has a slightly different opinion on hydrogen, and he's very well known on YouTube for his thoughts on Tesla and engineering advice, as well as electric vehicles in general. And he said in this recent interview that for a passenger car, he would prefer a battery electric car um, because it's going shorter distances and can afford to have a smaller battery pack. But for class eight semi trucks, 
and VTOL jets or passenger airplanes, hydrogen is the perfect application because refueling tanks are much faster compared to electric charging and they can go much longer ranges. He did say that the United States is really behind in building out its hydrogen infrastructure. But if you look to other parts of the world, Asia is especially leading the charge in building out hydrogen. And Toyota, their whole product roadmap for the future is really focused on hydrogen. So they are incredibly invested in hydrogen being the fuel source of the future. Now you might be asking yourself, why can't you just make the heavy duty electric trucks and airplanes fully electric with just adding a larger and larger battery pack? The problem is, is that if you don't have a high enough energy density in the battery pack, you need to add more and more batteries to the vehicle. The larger battery pack you have in a vehicle will increase the vehicle's weight and consequently reduce its range and payload capacity. However, Elon Musk seems confident that even with semi-trucks, that they can make a battery pack with the 4680 cells that they introduced last year to have a high enough energy density and make the battery pack light enough to make electric semi-trucks feasible. So with all that being said, I personally think that Hylion is a very speculative investment with a lot of risk associated with it, given that they have so much to prove. But at a current market cap valuation of $2.5 billion, I do think that there is quite a bit of upside to this company for the next 5 or 10 years, assuming that they execute well and stay on track with their timelines. So what do you think about Hylion and whether you think it's a good investment? Let me know in the comments down below. If you got a lot of value out of this video, please smash the like button to support the channel and make sure to subscribe so that you get notified of future videos. Thanks for watching.